for staying with us. Consumers are feeling more stretched than ever before and are increasingly striving for convenient solutions which help to simplify their busy lives. However, consumers around the globe need and look for convenience in all forms, whether simplicity, time-saving or suitability. When it comes to the fast-moving consumer goods space, convenience is not only about store formats or products that are on the shelves or how they are packaged. It means more than the latest technologies or new engagement strategies. Let's speak to Derek Sykes, who is Commercial Director at Payflex, to unpack this for us. Thank you very much for coming. Hi, Colin. Always great to be here with you and your viewers. Yeah, so how's the trend developing in as far as online shopping and how people are comfortable to engage in these transactions for their convenience? So a couple of thoughts kind of spring to mind. The first is that, um, you know, convenience, we treat this as something that's particular to online. The reality is that I think human nature breeds this convenience idea. Um, and we're seeing it manifest itself in a couple of ways in the online space as well as the general trade space. And the first is that um, people want to make sure that the process that they go through is simple, fast and effective. Um, you know, we were talking earlier just before uh, we came online and we were talking about the fact that the average number of baskets that are abandoned are around 85 to 90 percent. So that's every time people go online to buy, nine out of ten of those baskets that they look at, they'll abandon. And that's largely because of the process that they have to go through to actually complete the transaction. So when we've done our research, what we've seen is that people say if they are able to do things faster and quicker, they wouldn't abandon the, uh, the carts. And a case in point there is Amazon uh, in the States. They introduced uh, what they called Amazon One Click. When they introduced that, they allowed their customers to preload their credit card details. And when they went on and they uh, sh uh, finished their shopping, they were able to close out their transaction with one click. They increased their sales by 40%. So that's the first example. The second example, um, I think, is when you think about uh, how people like to have immediate gratification. So online we see that in the fact that lots and lots of the transactions that take place are being taken uh, are taking place using credit, uh, using loans, um, and that's just so that people can access what they want today and not have to wait for it. Mm -hmm. So, so then what about the trend in as far as how online shopping has been, especially with regards to urban-centric uh, transactions, which are more convenient for logistics? Um, how transportation around the towns and cities through the traffic and all that but when you look to ordinary citizens who really envisage to up their scales and also get to enjoy the convenience that other people in other communities are enjoying so there's uh, two thoughts that jump to mind there the first is um uh, a little game that i like to play these days um, i like to order my uber um, to get me from the office to home and then I like to get on to Uber Eats at the same time and then order my dinner and then I have a race to see who can get to my house first, me or Uber Eats. Mm -hmm. So that convenience factor is happening all the time. People want to see things happen faster and faster and I don't think that's limited just to people living in the urban environment. Um, we spoke earlier as well about saying that you know we're seeing more and more that uh, people like Rain, Google, Amazon are looking at different and unique ways to increase the spread of data coverage so that more and more of the non-urban population are able to interact online. Um, we see that uh, through the stats. Uh, we see retail growing at around about 6-7% on an annual basis, whereas online retail is growing at 20%. So that's not just people moving from you know, urban purchases, it's people being included from around the country. How, how much marketing has been done for online shopping? Because I would actually want to observe that kind of interest in the convenience versus the interest of people to go to shopping malls. They are always jam-packed. <laughs> online shopping is growing. So the logical sense would mean that if there is an increase in online shopping, yep. why are the uh, 
the, the, the heads or the numbers not dropping in as far as physical shopping is concerned? So I don't think that's as simple an uh, answer as um, it's this versus that. I think there are a couple of things that are happening there. The first is that um, if you ever look at the marketplace as a whole, that changes every year. So every year there are people in their 60s and 70s who stop shopping, either because they die or because they've gone into retirement. And every year there are people coming out of school into the workplace and starting to become uh, consumers. So the marketplace itself is changing. That's the first thing. The second is that you have the scenario where people are wanting to access things faster. And I think that starts to drive um, looking at ways to get things to them easier. So you ask, well, you know, are people spending lots of money in terms of advertising online? Well, yes, they are. If you have a look at companies like Superbalist, if you have a uh, look at companies like Take A Lot, they spend a lot of money on above the line advertising, so on TV, and they spend a lot of time sending emailers and brochures out to their customers customer bases. Whereas the bricks and mortar retailers, they've got to protect the space that they've created over the years. So it's a very tricky one to say uh, one's okay, doing the other. You go, tell me about the cheapest way to manage your finances in as far as uh, the mode of payment. Let's make an example about Payflex, which yes. I would take that ordinary people do not know what we're talking about when we say Payflex, you know, yeah. and, and how, how can it work for them in a cheaper way as compared to using a credit card where you know you're going to get 26% interest there? So, so the, the simple example I like to use is that if you go buy a thousand rand uh, purchase online or in the store and you use a credit card or you use some form of debt to buy that, it's going to cost you ultimately between 1,200 and 1,500 Rand to get that item. So between 200 and 500 Rand disappears to interest. That's gone from your wallet forever. Whereas if you use a payment solution like, uh, like Payflex, um, the 1,000 Rand is all you pay. There's no interest, there's no fees. And so at the end of the day, that 200 to 500 Rand that was lost to interest is still in your pocket and you can come back and you can spend it um, at any of the retailers or any way that you want to spend it. Uh, all right, then lastly, who pays for the difference? So uh, in our model, the retailer pays a slightly higher um, credit card fee um, and that is then borne by the retailer at the end of the day. All right. Thank you so much for making time. Thank you very much. Right. Derek Sykes, Commercial Director at Payflex, talking about the instantaneous behavior of consumers. We're going to take a break when we return. Our program continues with Peter. Stay with us.